Spiritual formation is what God does on the inside. It's uh, the way he guides and shapes and forms our hearts. It can be as simple as just opening your Bible at any point in the day, or it might be as intense as going on a weekend retreat, and a retreat of silence and prayer and fasting. We see God in every aspect of life. He's not just uh, the God of our personal lives, but he's the God of every area of our life. We see him in science. We see him in athletics. We see him in liberal arts, and we are definitely see him in, in uh, the religious activities on campus. I see spiritual formation happening through all the traditional methods, um, through college hour and Bible studies and some great things that are going on on campus. And I also see so much spiritual formation happening uh, through conversations over lunch with students, through students being able to observe their professors, students who profess Christ, then having a great impact on these other students who really don't know what a relationship with the Lord looks like. If I'm walking down the sidewalk or I'm sitting in the lunchroom, I could be having conversations with students about what God is doing in their life, how he's shaping them, how they're discerning his will for their lives, and that's just really an exciting part of being here. Most of our students that come to us come to us with questions. And so as they're working out their salvation, they're also getting to find out how rich Christ is. And so they can see Christ, see his face in the poor, see him in the injustices of society. And then through the lenses of scripture, they get to identify with a Christian worldview. What does the Bible say about this? And through those uh, intense moments and encounters, they are working out what they believe. The fact that we have non-Christians here, I feel like, for one, it gives Christians just the opportunity to really to really share their lives. And for many of them who are preparing to go into ministry, they don't have to look any farther than across the hall in the residence hall um, for an opportunity to do that. And then for the students who haven't had any opportunity at all, I mean, our hope is that they would walk through the doors here, maybe not knowing a thing, and maybe by the time that they graduate or even within the next few months, they come, they come face to face with understanding who Jesus is. The student is becoming his or her own person. And it's fun to be in that journey with these students as their faith is being shaped and formed. And a lot of times what I do with students is I don't give answers when they ask questions. I ask questions back because I want them to do the hard work of understanding faith for themselves, not just their parents' faith, not their pastor's faith, not my faith, but their faith. Students who don't know the Lord don't all of a sudden feel like they have to fill out a commitment card in order to be accepted here. Um, we have just, the community is very um, open and welcoming. And I think people, the, the new students that we have are very often impacted just by the friendliness of it and the warmth of it. Um, and then I do see that a number of students, um, just through observing community and, and developing relationships here, um, really begin to understand more of what being a Christian is. While our students are preparing and studying, they're also touching and experiencing. So what takes place in the classroom is not separate from what takes place outside of the classroom. In fact, in many ways, the community is our classroom. So we get to touch, to see, to smell, to experience what we're reading and thinking about. In our ministry major, we prepare students to graduate and to go immediately into ministry. And they do this in many ways. Some become youth pastors, some are children's ministers, camp directors, senior pastors, worship leaders. It's really fun to watch them blossom and grow and enter into ministry. Students have the opportunity to touch a hurting humanity. And I like to call this their missions uh, moments, where in the summer they'll take long-term trips, in the spring and throughout the fall, there's short-term mission explosions. And then there's always the opportunity to be engaged with the local community around them. We have several uh, student groups right now that live among the poor in the city, and they serve the poor, and they come and study here during the day. So it's a wonderful incarnational opportunity that they get to have here. Recently, I had a conversation with one young woman, and she was sitting in my office, and she was rather um, fatigued and annoyed, and she didn't know what she was gonna do. She was really quite disturbed about the whole thing. She was in another major because she knew that it would provide a good job and it would be a safe occupation for her. But she was really considering ministry, and I looked at her and I said, let me guess, you don't want to change majors into ministry because you want to live a safe life. And she said, yes, I'm tired of being safe. I said, great, then why don't you step out and take advantage of what the Lord is having to offer 
and let's continue to discern and see if He's calling you to ministry. When I think about spiritual formation, especially on campus, I think about the intentionality of it. Knowing how that impacts decisions that you make, relationships that you have, um, just how you view your life and the world and how you view culture, uh, how that changes once you are intentionally following the Lord. Paul in the book of Ephesians writes to the church and he says that gifts were given to the body to encourage and equip them for the work of ministry. That's spiritual formation at Fresno Pacific University. Through the lives of our leaders, our professors, our staff, all of our faculty, God encourages, equips, and uses these vessels, these gifts, to stimulate global evangelism in the world. <music>